previously on the Death Saving Bros podcast. So we go back to the surface and then take off at a dead sprint in the correct direction. Because we should also probably stop in Astrakhan to, uh, I'm going to gesture at Jet and get the Eamon Day out of his up bay. As you're coming out of the crypt, two birds are going to start clawing at Jet's face. You see them change into two winged demons. I smack it towards Ambionitis and say, batter's up. Why did they single you out? It might be this glowy staff key thing. So let's just go ahead and advance to Astrocane then. One woman walks up to you and asks, are you going to the festival? A man is taking a sweeping bow. In the beginning, there was nothing. Then suddenly, a thought flashed brilliantly across the ether. It was out of this thought that the goddess Ayun, Pelor and Tiamat, Torm, Sargonis, was born. The gods began to fight. Then the gods retreated. We cried out in pain and sought to make them pay. In our ignorance, we used ancient magics and opened a portal to the Nine Hells in the demon apocalypse. Only Ayun, in her wisdom, bringing forth a new god. This new god was Helleros. Helleros acted quickly and proved himself our savior. And the guy who was announcing and talking things is going to get his ass speared. No need to be alarmed. This has been a demonstration for the new gym. Hammer 5. It worked. Harry is standing next to the Hammerbottom brothers and goes, I think Carfwad would like to talk to you. Who is this fucking guy? This guy's Farquad's fucking bodyguard. He's a, big, he's a big guy. Carfwad asks, So why have you sought an audience with me? I think he might have a demon in him. Jet. Like the plane. So then he starts swinging the incenser around Jet. The smoke starts swirling around you until suddenly you can see a symbol. Wait, isn't that the symbol of Sorganus? Welcome to another episode of the Death Saving Bros Podcast. I am your host and Dungeon Master, Paul Camper. With me today, I have Ben Renfro. Just like to say congratulations to the U.S. women's uh, team for winning the World Cup and give a shout out to Alex Morgan and Julie Ertz because you guys are total babes. Brad Renfro. I saw my dad chopping up onions today and I cried. Onions was such a good dog. (laughs) Oh, Jesus. Brad Richards. Wow. That was almost as bad as Ben's. Fuck you, Ben. Matt Smith. My booty hole is quite wide today. Quite wide. And Eric Nemeth. Paul wants me to deep throat this microphone, just like he wants me to deep throat everything else with him tonight. Yeah, no, good job to the women's team. Would have been cool if it was the men's team, but it is what it is. (laughs) That was the crackle of a white claw. (laughs) Some say if you hold your ear up to the white claw, you can hear the the sound of a jewel cracking. What? That, that is a thing. You know how the conch shells in the ocean? If you put uh, your ear a up to... A jewel. Yeah. Like the sound of ripping a jewel. That's how you know it's good. <laughs> Quality assurance. I did not know that. Yeah. Thank, thank you so for... The sound of hitting a jewel pen is like the sound of the ocean, I guess. No, it's the sound of a white claw. Oh, it's the sound of a white claw. Not, Not the ocean. It smells like Sobu up in you. <laughs> Are you kidding? Yeah, I, I think it. everybody here has a drink except for you. I left my beer in the call. There's a fridge right behind you, bro. Yeah, you can help yourself to some Great Lakes. Yeah, I there's brought also some Corona. Tea beer and... Uh... Wait, there's tea beer? Yes. Uh, what? Is that the one I had last time? I wanted just no. some S beer. Fuck. <laughs> Well, can I go grab a beer then? Fine, I'll we'll drink. stop the podcast so you can go grab a beer. Grab me my I'll Sprite while you're in there, please. Let's all start our rolls for who's going to do the recap now. Uh, we all put them in a hat. Yeah. Um, you got the hat? Oh, wait. Here, we can use my bucket of hat. You got Kuwait. the hat? We got the fat. You said I can grab a Corona? This one is from Kuwait. Yeah, I don't care. I got this when I was in Kuwait. Is that the same company that had the Beats by Dr. Dre? Don't. <laughs> oh, my Beats by Dr. Habib. <laughs> Dr. Habib. No, it was not. Come on, Paul. I brought a hat. Let me do the drawing. 
And I'm not going to whack right. it. My dice is in there. Everybody take a shot. Yeah, everybody toss your D20s in the hat. Brad Renfro is going to pull the recap today. All right, Sir Ambionitis, will you do the <laughs> honors? He's a knight? Since when's he a knight? He's a peasant. Take a Peasants good one. can't be knights. Since it's 1028, it's knight. Fuck you. Ha-ha! I don't know who that is. Who's got the red numbers? That'd be Eric. Damn it. Uh, All right, fucked. Eric, who's your You done back? fucked up, boy. So, Eric, what happened last time on the Death Saving Bros podcast? We went back into town. Uh, there was a festival going on. My character saw young blasphemous things. Uh, was it Brixius or Ambionitis a spear to speaker? That would uh, be Brixius. Brixius spear to speaker. I could put my hand on my sword, but apparently I'm not allowed to fight anyone. Or I just launch a crusade. Yep. That happened. And, and it ended with us about to start talking about Jet's inner demons and or outer demons. That's literally all I I'm remember. about an eagle or a bird or a hawk or some sort of bullshit that we saw. We found Lord Farquaad. That was Farquaad. Launch. That's what we said. You can launch all the crusades you want as long as you have about 500,000 more people as backup. <laughs> I have a bunch of I have that many orphans. Spigus is going to be the general. All right, bring him in and we'll uh, get this crusade started. So, Paul, can I have an army of orphans? No. Is he general lonely? Ah. Ah. <laughs> ah. Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Oof. Tough. I'm here without you, baby. Yeah, you'd be surprised how much money you could save if you go to meat shopping at an orphanage. <laughs> but you're still on my lonely mind. That's fucking terrible. All right. <laughs> Has anyone ever played <laughs> Fable 3? Yes. yes. So the most cartoonishly evil thing I've ever done in a video game is once I was already king, and you know how like, the characters, the NPCs could give you like fetch quests for relationship? Yeah. So one of my kids asked for a toy teddy bear. So I thought, easy, I'll just go to the general store, get a toy teddy bear, and bring it back. And I went to every single store in the game, and for some reason they just weren't carrying any teddy bears at the time. So the only way I knew how to find one was to go to the orphanage <laughs> and steal it. <laughs> so I stole a teddy bear from an orphan to give to the literal prince of the kingdom. And that's the worst thing I've ever done. I always turn an orphanage in a brothel. <laughs> that is one of the choices in the game. That was an option. That's wow. what it was. <laughs> it was. Wow, Fable is a messed up game. Yeah. It's a great game. <laughs> Actually, you could sacrifice first. your wife and children to an uh, evil to God. Yes, you get extra points. You could. Yeah. <laughs> wow. A lot of EXP and a good hammer in the first game. Yep. Um, you know what isn't a messed up game all the time? Dungeons and Dragons, which is what we are. We are a fifth edition actual play Dungeons and Dragons podcast. I have slaughtered people in this game. I like, brutally I murdered them. I hate you for that segue. This guy. You know you like that segue. So much sodomy in this game. Anyways, let's go ahead and play Pick Up Where We Left Off. Um, I don't, how do you play Pick Up Where We Left Off? With Jet, was uh, had just been kind of examined by Lord Carfwad and... Arquad. Carfwad. That's what we said. Yeah. And he had thrown some incense around, and it had formed along a, like, almost like a shell around your body in the shape of a giant spread-winged condor which is just a giant bird. And then you also had a blazing tattoo on your shoulder. Which looked like a rabbit with a bow tie. No. <laughs> it looks like a fiery condor. And uh, Is it on his shoulder, or was it on his lower back, like just above the tailbone? It was on his <laughs> upper back, around his shoulder blade area. So it was above the tailbone. Six inches above his asshole, yes. <laughs> Which is also where my shoulder blade's at. <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> Unproportionally. Lord Carfwad said that the brand is kind of like a link with Sargonis. He said that it had something to do with Sargonis and that that's not necessarily a good thing because Sargonis is an evil god and, of course, Helleros is the one true god in Trugala. Sure. Um... Is the one to God. And who says otherwise will be crusaded. 
All hail Tom. <laughs> we all just start singing, Tom is an awesome god he reigns. <laughs> 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 Uh, oh. Lord Carfwad, the tiny little gnome, his bishop's hat starts quivering with a little bit of uh, impudence, and he goes, Well, I hardly believe that's true. Uh, Helleros, as you know, is a part of Torm. He has some of Torm's powers. My hand is on my sword right now. And As is my hand. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Carfwad says, You know... I don't have to help you. Please. I'd really like an explanation for what is going on around me right now. Only if your torm-loving friend takes his hand off his sword. This is my church. I want to whisper to Prothean. Not yet. I take my hand off <laughs> my sword, but I, I want to note my character looks pissed. This is a fucking church? Yes, you're in the church right now. We're in a fucking church? Yeah. Wait, were we in the church part or the, like, magistrate part? The church part. Like, yeah. this fucking place is a fucking church like, where people do holy shit in a fucking church? Yeah. Who the fuck let us in a fucking church? They do church <laughs> stuff. Why are we swearing in a fucking church? Who's Why this haven't me? I burned the struts down? That's a better question. After. So, Lord Carfwad turns to Jet, keeping an eye on Prothean and... Uh, Prothean, you are now aware of the fact that Harry, the giant like bodyguard, is now standing next to you, and he has his eyes on you. My eyes are on him, intimidatingly. He is staring at you. I like Can it. Can I roll an intimidation check with my creepy smile? Sure. Raise one eyebrow seductively. I rolled a four. All right. So I rolled a tw- natural 20. <laughs> Uh, Harry just raises an eyebrow at you and keeps staring. I stare back, almost seductively. Lord Carfwad says, Well, Jet, um, I guess, you know, I don't know a whole lot about Sargonis and what this brand might mean, but I do know that there were some followers, I guess, if that's what you want to call them, of Sargonis, who were taking young acolytes and branding them, tattooing them, hoping that they might be chosen as the avatar of Sargonis on the earth, but of course that's all, that's all pish posh and hogwash. I mean, he clearly has a brand on him, though. Saying hog, yeah, I was gonna say that, isn't that what this whole uh, thing around me is all about? Wait, you said I have a brand on me? No, no, not at all. And I see I mean, your shoulder's completely fine. (laughs) <laughs> Nothing to worry about. <laughs> yes, you have a, Shut br- up. a brand on your shoulder. Shut the fuck up, Farquad. Carfwad. That's what I said, not now, damn it. <laughs> no, your shoulder is completely fine. Hold on a second. You be quiet. And... Nothing wrong with your shoulder. So what you're saying is that this mark that I have on me, this possession isn't a demon that was put inside of me. It was a god that was put inside of me? Not put inside of you, but uh, let give me one moment. And he turns, he turns away from you, goes up to the altar that is in front of that giant painting with Helleros and the people fighting the demons of the abyss. And he comes back with a basically what you would describe as like a, a tiny club, and it, it's gonna <laughs> beat you. <laughs> and Hold it on. is uh, coated in gold, and it has a silver handle. And he starts, like, swinging it around on the little chain that he has. Just looks like a little drumstick. Yeah. Or, like, a, one end of a nunchuck. Or a and, marital aid. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, demon, be gone. And he hits you over the head with it. And is back on my sword. Do I take any damage? Or <laughs> He asks, do you feel all right? A little... A little aggravated that you just hit me with that. Did anybody see anything fly away from his body? Yeah, this that's all a fucking scam. club. <laughs> okay, well then, uh, no, it's not a demon. You are not possessed by a demon. Perhaps this brand is actually, it actually means something. Most of the acolytes that I've seen in my day or heard about were just, it was all, again, pish posh and hogwash. But, of course, Sargonis is a real god, a real force in 
the realm of Ralvaria, so it is possible that you might actually have some sort of link to him that uh, if he chose to, he could work through you. Wait a minute. So your grand idea of figuring out whether this was a demon or not was taking that little dildo and hitting him with it? Well, this is how you exercise someone. By is that correct? Them. That is not I correct. I thought it was the jumper jacks. I've been doing so With many jumper jacks. With a plated dildo. <laughs> and your calves look great because yeah. of it. Oh, thank you. It's the first comp watching to make sure everything was being done like up to code, as it were. Yeah. Does uh, that seem yeah, right? Yeah, that actually was like, Can I look at him to see like if that was actually a thing, or this guy just like hitting people with a fucking golden plated dildo? What you know is that it requires some sort of spell, and so your assumption would be that somebody along the line enchanted this item so that it forces out the demon. It's so crude he, he and cast the spell of basic attack. Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it <laughs> like you've it's not un, uncommon. This is this is fine. Okay. okay. So do you give me confirmation like a quick nod? Sure, yeah. Okay. It's fine. Just a quick thumbs up. I mean it's stupid. It's a stupid way to do it, but... I'm going to shake my head disapprovingly, but give a thumbs up. I've, well, I've also seen the fucking Torm guy try to crusade a fucking family on a corn farm. Nothing's really on par in this, <laughs> on this storyline. Some cool shit. Back to this guy and his fucking spinny dildo of magic. I'm going to go outside. Far um, why? Why would you do that? We we still have to figure out what to do about Jet. Jet, you, like I said previously, I can show you some meditation so that uh, if you don't like this link, which if you didn't like the link with Sargonis, I'm, I wouldn't blame you because Sargonis is an evil god. Uh, but I can show you how to manage that if the link ever tried was activated so that you have some sort of control over it. Question for you, Farquaad. Tarfwad. That's what I yeah, that's thought, Paul, um, just being serious right now, um, I think you're going to need to get your ears checked at some point, because we've been saying Farquad consistently, and every time we've said Carfwad, you've said it's wrong, even though we're definitely saying Farquad. That's, that's <laughs> what I said. I said Farquad. I said figured out. I said Farquad. Yeah, your name is Farquad. Out of those one, two, three, four, five, six times, only once was that correct. Matt. No, it's correct every time. Okay. I said the same exact thing every time, as did everyone else. He did. <laughs> Carfwad, Farquad. I just said it twice in a row. Jet, what were you trying to say? Say whether or not this is an evil power or not, I don't think I should get rid of it. I always thought that, uh, say I always thought Boeing, like, put a demon inside of me to try to like, hurt me or something. I didn't realize he maybe intended for me to be kind of, like, really important, I guess. So if there's a way to kind of stop it so that, like, the demons can't come through, but maybe I can try to figure out more what's going on. Say, I'll take your guidance for it. Well, I definitely don't know how to stop it. I don't know what this is, but, yeah, I can show you how to maybe control it. I, I, I think I owe that to my, uh, my old master. All right, back to my question, though. Uh, so I don't know if I like him having the god of revenge in him. Uh, what happens if we just kill Jet? Then what happens with that link? I can get some fires ready. I would assume that it would sever. Then there would be no, nothing. There would. It's like one one tin can and a string, but there's no tin can on the other end of the string. So it's not like one of those situations where you break the link and then all of a sudden, like, the god is actually trapped within him and then he's released out into the world and then can control the universe? No, he can control the universe whether or not he's in Jet's body, but he's not in Jet's body. So are you telling me you don't like this god, you know he's a bad god, our best option might be to just kill Jet? My sword slowly starts coming out of its sheath. To keep this god with one less connection to this world. No, um, it would be possible that a priest of Sargonis might, and he chuckles and goes, priest, priest of Sargonis might know how to break this bond, but I just don't know what this is exactly. I have some idea, but I don't know for sure. Hmm. 
All right, and would your Dragon Boy friend, Bubble Buddy uh, Zawatsky, know anything about this? Because, again, as I've told you multiple times, and you seem to not listen to a damn word any of us say, because you can't hear anything, uh, he is working with demons, obviously. Do you think he knows anything about this bond, or how to break it, or anything of the gods of sorts? My characters walk over while he's saying that and hitting the button repeatedly like 10 times in a row. I make sure my mage hand is there to pop it every time it comes up because I do not want him hearing a damn word of this conversation. Um, Harry would have stopped you before you walked away. Man. Carfwad says, Prothean, do not approach the, uh, the podium, please. Just, you, I don't trust you. Come back over here. <laughs> Zawadzki might know more. I mean... Last time you were here, you didn't want to talk to him, and then you did want to talk to him, but he's in Principium. He's in the capital. If you wanted to go speak to him, you could. Uh, he is one of the highest of our order, but um, I think that if you could find Sargonis followers, they would be your best bet. Is there a temple of Sargonis near the capital? Not in Trugala. Heleros. And he clasps his hands together and looks at the sky. The false god. Is our holy and rightful leader. So if Heleros has the power of all five gods, would a Heleros temple not have uh, access to the same information? Actually, that's a very good point. And he, he puts a finger to his lips and he crosses his arm across his chest and goes, Hmm. Hmm. That's an amazingly good point for a minus two intelligence. Minus one now that I have uh, achieved a ability score improvement. <laughs> <laughs> You're just as smart as Prothean now. Um, wow. Actually, you know what? <laughs> With all the archives... Yeah, wait, that... Is that, should that be somebody else's idea? Since uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even, even, even dumb people have moments of brilliance. You can say it in character. I'll just be offended. <laughs> With all the archives in the capital of Principium, it is quite possible that Zawadzki might know how to solve your problem. And he claps his hands together and goes, Ha! Huh, that is a wonderful idea, actually. Yes, you could go to Principium and you could speak to Zawadzki. If you want, I will press the bubble and let him know that you're coming. Does he have any irrational fears I should know about? <coughs> irrational fears? Yes. Such as a man with a beard of feathers? A okay, half orc with a beard of feathers? Um, no. Or just half orcs. Or just feathers. Or like spiders or mice or heights or clowns. Or marital aids that dispel demons. Mermaids. Anal beads. Premarital sex. Warhammers to the face. <laughs> Death. <laughs> Life. Prothean. Kids. Smiles. Premarital sex. Peanut butter. Women. Mother in laws. Cocaine. Hairy chested men. No, none of those things. I'm sure. Hairy chested men? Escalators? Fat women. Vampires Eels. on roller skates. Jingly keys? Eels. I think this is an odd line of questioning, but no, I don't know of any fears. Girl Scouts? I at do. The door. I do know that he loves Turkish delight. So he's <laughs> Edward. Let's see, where's, uh, is Aslan nearby? No, no, Aslan was in there. That was the White Wits who gave at home Edwin, Edward. Yeah, Edward. The Turkish delights to, to betray his family. Oh yeah, so has anyone ever tried would... Turkish delight? Yeah, they're actually not yeah, bad. It it's is... not bad. I don't know if it's quite worth you know betraying your entire family for. Yeah, no, it's definitely not starting <laughs> yeah. a war over <laughs> In a timeless wardrobe. <laughs> uh, better yet though, don't let Zawadzki know we're coming. We want to surprise him. If we show up, he might be really happy to finally meet us. Not through the bubble. And if he knows we're coming, kind of ruins the surprise. Uh, give me a persuasion check. We'll bring him some Turkish delight. He'll never see it coming. We'll say it's from you. You can do it with advantage now. <laughs> Thank you. That was a four. <laughs> Much better. Uh, 23. Yeah, Carfwad hears what Abe has to say and goes, <laughs> Ooh, really? Maybe maybe I'll get that promotion. Yes, no, I, I think that's a wonderful idea. It, it is a great idea, and you're still not getting that promotion. I'm telling you, you gotta. <laughs> no, no, gotta no, 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 no. I'm off. getting that promotion eventually. Wait, he promotes you? Yes. Okay. No. He'll, he'll he, promote me to bishop. He is not. If Wait, he's you been promote telling him. Bits boy? Bishop. <laughs> That's what he said. What is wrong with your hearing, man? If theoretically Zawadzki were to die, you know, just like of old age or something, what would that mean for your position? 
Well, then the entire organization, all the hierarchy of the priests of Heleros would be shuffled around. I'm sure that one of the uh, high order would take Zawadzki's place, and then somebody below him would take his place, and then somebody below him would take his place, and then I might have a chance to move up into that place. You'd be in hide for one job at a time, Abe. <laughs> Just curious. So how about those meditation techniques, huh, Jet? Yes, let's do that. All right. Shall we start with some tea? Masturbation techniques? Uh, he goes ahead and shows you a couple techniques. It only takes a few minutes because basically it's just, uh, with you being a monk, you already understand the basic concepts of meditation, and it's just a little bit different on how you would handle it concerning divine intervention. During this entire meditation process, Prothean passed out of boredom. And uh, the way that you would do this meditation is that if the link does happen to go live, just like it did in Siren's uh, cabin, once it happens, you'll be able to do a constitution saving throw to see if you resist this link. If you're successful, you resist it, and then if you're not, then you'll have an opportunity to resist it further down the line. All right, now I got a fighting chance. And Carfwat says, all right, well, um, it sounds like the party's dying down outside, but don't worry, all the party continues on in the bars late into the evening. Celebration of life in Astrocane is a wonderful celebration, so go have fun. Sounds good, and so I'll walk out to the group, and uh, I'll just let them know, guys, there's nothing to worry about anymore. i uh, say I think that... We went over some stuff that should at least hold me over until we can go talk to the Zawatsky, if that was a plan. Uh, at least for tonight, though. Spent a lot of time doing a lot of boring crap, so... Uh, I know about it. some party going on, if y'all wanna... Yeah, it was boring. Very boring. Very inconsiderate of you to make us sit through that. <laughs> Very bored. Celebration of life, eh? And I wanna wink, but since I have an eye patch, it just looks like I'm regularly <laughs> blinking. <laughs> Who are you winking at? Just in general. At the camera. <laughs> the camera. <laughs> you lift up the eye patch and then wink. <laughs> you just see the yes. giant socket of his fucking eye. <laughs> no eye in it. Just a dark hole. Hmm, that's what you think. I want to make sure that as we're exiting the church, uh, I do take a look at that painting with the demons on it that has our demon in it. And I want to take a moment to stop, stare at it, kind of memorize it, and uh, really get the image of this uh, demon in my head. Really thirsting my revenge right now that I'm seeking. Um, I'm going to stop and talk to him. You want me just to cut down the painting? No, because otherwise I don't know really what the demon we'd be after would look like. And this helps me uh, to no, remember. I'll just take the painting with us. I don't think we should steal from a church. Oh, it's a fake too. It's... We know his name already, don't we? Yes, it's four, four wheeler. Four wheeler. Four Lyras. Four Lyras. Wheeler. Four wheeler. That's, that's what, what I said. said. <laughs> but I'm really liking this. That's what we said thing. <laughs> Let's just do a quick sketch of him based off of the painting. Can any of us actually like draw in character and in, uh, in real life? In character, or any of us? I like... feel like I'd be somewhat able to. Is that no? Damn well, I don't know how to. My character can hop soon someone with a great sword. Is that a skill? Close. It's uh it's close, close. sketching. Actually, Prothean, your character might know because you were brought up as a noble, so you would have been taught like the quote unquote noble arts, like arithmetic and reading, writing. Yeah, I probably wouldn't have painting. All right, we'll All right, sketch that real quick. Not with the great sword and the harpooning thing. Good skill, but Book and sketch paper. it into someone's forehead. I got you, I got you. You need a piece of parchment to write on? Here you go. And I take out a piece of parchment. Hopefully I have one. And you need a writing utensil? I pluck a feather from my beard and hand it to him so that he could write with it. You Does the gotta... plucking of said feather cause you to sneeze? No. It should tickle? No. Uh, that would actually... not hurt, it would hurt. <laughs> you ever pull yeah. out your hair, it doesn't tickle? Have you ever pulled out a nose hair? Yeah, you sneeze. Fucking you always makes sneeze. Me sneeze. You I've always never sneeze. sneezed pulling out a nose hair. I have. First of all, for, hold on, hold on. First of all, that's a fucking nose hair. This is a beard on his fucking chin. This is a feather on his chin. Oh, we got, ooh, Satan <laughs> tried to come out of me. 
Yeah, I don't see it. Pulling out demon. A, yeah, pulling out a beard hair is not like pulling out a fucking nose hair. I would argue if I'm ruling that he needs to roll a constitution oh check. God. I would argue As a we, man that had a beard, it's not the same. If we yeah, tugged, tugged a hair on it, doesn't, I don't if have to If we tugged sneeze. on his motherfucking beard, he would not sneeze. I know, you guys used to fucking pull me by that goddamn thing. Like, this doesn't hurt. Not anymore. Just, just make it a low DC. Yeah, my face is fucking numb. Motherfuckers, no, I don't. No, I don't sneeze. <laughs> What'd you roll? <laughs> it's a total of eight. So a natural what one? No, a total of a natural four. You start. Huh? Huh? I punch him huh? straight in the stomach. Nice. Good save. <laughs> I'd okay. If I'm about to sneeze and I get decked in the stomach or face, I'd. S I'll allow it. I'll allow it. Does you a don't twenty sneeze. something? <laughs> <laughs> I'll allow it. You don't sneeze. All right. Regardless, but you lose your breath. <sighs> All right. Good call, brother. Whoa. And you just need to find some ink to write with this with. I stab you in the arm and use your blood. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I was just gonna say let's mash up some corn. But I was gonna say right. they probably have some <laughs> right next door in the magistrate's <laughs> office. Oh, Harry oops. Harry shows up at your shoulder and goes, Oh, or you could just use this. And he gives you a stick of charcoal. Thanks, Harry. <laughs> you still stab me? Stab him with a stick of charcoal. <laughs> <laughs> no, you just stick of charcoal. But I feel like Prothean honestly would just take their arm feather just poke it in someone's arm with blood. <laughs> that would have started a war in a church. <laughs> well, is the demon is the demon red on the painting? <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, that'd be that'd be accurate. Uh, you are able to sketch a port a sketch of this demon, and you can see that it is slightly similar to the demon that you encountered that was at the crypt of Parmar. It is winged, it is bare-chested, loincloth, carrying a whip and a sword sparking with lightning, roaring flames coming out of its mouth, and horns atop its head. I so call that sword when we kill him. Bastard. Take the whip. Looks I'll like, take the whip looks for sure. Like a good time. When you say it looks similar, does it like looks like it's like the same species of demon? No, it's it's slightly different. Um, <laughs> yet similar. It, it's similar. <laughs> uh, sure, same species. There are species of demons. Yeah, so there's like, like the little like scorpion flying demon things, and there's like that rock thing we killed. That's fair. That's for, wait, it's the same species as the one that was kicking my ass in the fucking hill? Yes. Yeah, and then I came up and one-shotted it. Right, yeah, after I did everything else. Well, I didn't see any of that. Yeah. I saw myself one-shot it. Because you were behind the hill, but that's fine. Um, I just want everyone to show, show everyone. I drew a picture of them. Beautiful. So, yes, it is a similar species. Excellent. <laughs> Alrighty then, and... Yeah, so you're doing stuff. I'm done doing stuff. We're going to the capital. To the capital. Capital! Are you going right now? I was. It's nighttime right now, isn't it? It is nighttime right now. We should now. go to the party. Oh, yeah, I was, that's what I'm saying. He, as in Jet, as in the aircraft, is going to said party. I suppose us as a group, I mean, I guess I'll go. And then we'll go in the morning. Plan? You know a good place to stay the night there? Parkwad? In the Temple of Helleros. You, you mean Carfwad? Yep. Yeah, that's, that's what we said, Carfwad. That's what I said, I said Farquad. That's what Farquad. Figure it out. So I said, I figured it. Get this guy fucking puppers. Guy needs a puppers. The uh, closest tavern and inn would be Robert's Hall. Uh, go out of the church, take a right, and then two streets, take a left, and an, there'll be a big bunch of people out in the street outside of it big happening place. I'm sure you can find a room there. It's one of the largest places in town. I was really waiting for you to make, like, an inn called, like, oh, what the fuck? The Oats Hall. And I'd shit myself. The Oats Hall? A hall of notes. Oh. <laughs> that would have been nice. good. You're welcome. Let's, let's dial it back and go back to it. We record. Or What's you, the cheapest no, place in town? Cheapest place in town? Um... I don't know. It, you might be able to grab a room with uh, Kamara. She has a few extra rooms above her general store, but she's closed for the day. Although, if you want to, she would probably be at Robert's Hall celebrating. 
or we could just stay at Rob's Hall. Party! Go to Rob's Hall. Uh, when you exit out of the church, you can see that people are already dismantling the stage where Brixius had tackled the order and uh, made a big spectacle. And you recognize one of the people that is overseeing the dismantling of the stage. Brixius, you recognize Tyndall, the tiefling who you had hired to set up the new gym in Astrocane, now called the Hammer Five. Yeah, Tinder, right? Yes. Tinder. I spear him. Eh. You're on your own. On this <laughs> one. He should I mean, know. If he's setting up the gym, yeah, he should be. He should know that's the usual gym greeting. He should always be prepared for spearing. That's like the number one rule. I mean, when I was working at the gym making shit wages, I know I was speared at least like 13 times a day. Wake up in the morning, speared. Go to bed at night, speared. <laughs> Gotta take a shit, speared. That like that was my alarm clock, was a spear. All right, then roll the for hit. like halfway out of your butthole, speared. <laughs> <laughs> Strength, right? Yes. 24. Jacking off alone in your room, four in the morning, speared. speared. <laughs> Finally you... get a girl home, she gets speared. And then <laughs> you get speared. That's a double spearing. Sometimes it takes takes more than one to party. <laughs> <laughs> you spear Tyndall, and he goes sprawling midway through a sentence. He's saying to one of the construction workers, b- 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 make sure that you w- you keep the lumber to... Oh! And he goes to the ground. Uh, yeah. Uh, ha ha ha, Tinder. What's up, my man? <laughs> And I, as I'm standing up, I reach out my hand to help him up. Your hand uh, or your that, mate's that, hand? That, 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 what, are you, what, what are you doing? How's the gym coming along, buddy? Well, this lum, l- l- lumber is for is for the gym. Oh, I was just making sure. I just thought I'd greet you, say what's up. Is, um, is, is, is that uh, c- c- common where, where, where you're from? The gym's oh, yeah. Uh, just let you know, uh, with this gym, uh, spearing is a very common thing, and you will get speared a lot more in my time of knowing you. Uh, but... but just, j- j- just so you know, I, I, d- d- I d- 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 don't want any p- p- part of this after I set it up. Tough up or shut up. I just a- after we set this up, I'm probably never gonna talk to this guy again because it's giving me a headache. Um, I, I, I heard heard that. Tinder, Spear my man. Again. Tinder, Tinder, take m- it easy. M- my name's Tindall. Oh, Spear. Spear. That's what I said. Listen, Tinder. Uh, so that's one of the perks of being my friend, and I really appreciate all you're doing for the gym. Uh, do you have an estimate of when it's going to be ready? It's, it's two weeks. Okay, awesome. And I also have something I want you to add on special for it. And in doing so, I'll give you a coupon for a free week, and I'll teach you how to avoid spears like that. What? What? what, what? All right, so I recently came up across parts for a flamethrower. I would like to, out front, above the sign for the gym, have a flamethrower spitting out flames constantly. Um... So expensive. <laughs> I... I... D- 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 don't know... H- or how to, 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 to set that up. I have all the pieces. Even if it's not... Even if it's not constantly spraying, like maybe like a button in my office or something like that, where I push it and flames just kind of go up, I could use it for demonstrations and stuff. See, now that sounds reasonable. Why wouldn't you put that on the actual one back in, uh... The place where you're going to be residing most. Because he's going to be there to promote it himself. See, here, the flamethrower is going to do the promoting. Hey. Hey, Bruxius, how much is that going to cost a day? Because I'm pretty sure that's more than Jet's wages for you. I'm Frank, never going to get a I raise in pieces. my life. I have the pieces. It's okay. Listen, yeah, you're going to have to stop paying Jet. I, I do have... Yeah, I was looking over at the financial books, and there is a little bit of room for cutbacks and uh, wages for employees. When were you looking at the books? Between the Hella Roast, the Demon... And the traveling and the goblin. So when exactly were you peeping at the finances? I just glare you down. Shut up. So the finances. I got a guy for that. I'm working on it. Tinder. Wait, didn't you? Figus is your accountant, isn't it? Figus is the accountant. And that's what I said. I said Tinder. I have to kill Figus. That's what I said. Dude, can nobody in this town hear? It's all that hella real stuff. It's this air here. All right, so flamethrower if i give you and leave you the parts can you maybe find a way to make an addition to the gym i think i would have to to to, to get some p- permits oh for sure that m- m- may cost uh ex- 
extra m m m money. Oh, I can. Yeah, I got the money for the permits. That's fine. Mm -hmm. How much for these permits? He has the money. Flame at, at all t t times? Or no, just, just we can, we can go button activated. Uh, at at least t t two. No, if you f f front me one hundred gold. What if I front you fifty gold and I uh, give you passes to not be speared by me? Ass face. Who taught you how to do business? <laughs> how much are these permits? He said, he said 100 gold. Yeah, no, I want to know the entire number for these permits. He said front him 100 gold. I want to know the number for these uh, permits. Way to be listening, brother. P -p 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 possibly two, t -t 200. That's fine. That's fine. That ain't no problem. That ain't no problem. 200 gold? Oh, my God. Oh, I thought he was yes. going to say some ridiculous yes. ass number. Aminitis? Yeah. We see probably just checked over by your loyal Figus. <laughs> Listen, I don't have oh. time to talk to Figus. Listen, I want flames for this motherfucking gym. I have to kill Figus. I will... Front you the money, and provide you with anything you need. Fuck, I might, I might even just front you the full amount, and just in good faith, if it does not end up costing two hundred gold, you'll die. And you do not return the money, you might die. But no, it's not a might. You will die. I want to make it sure that if you do this for me, I will teach you how to defend against being speared, and I'll be very happy. Oh, okay. Do, do, do you have the, the m m money now? Of course. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> and he... I didn't expect you to actually have the money. I just look at him still. <laughs> he gives a few more commands to make sure that the lumber is taken down the street to where your gym is located, and he asks for the money. I give him the money. Wait. Listen. Tinder. Tyndall. That's what he said. That's what he said. That's what I said. That's what I said. I said Tinder. Uh, I'm giving this to you in good faith. If I find out that my gym does not have flames, or that the money is not returned to me, I will find you, and I will kill you. I just want to say, we're doing that. Prothean puts his hand on his shoulder and does his famous Prothean smile. And this is my assurance. My roll intimidation. He is intimidated. We went from the Death Saving Bros podcast to the plot of Taken. <laughs> <laughs> that's where I was going. Yeah, that's where I was going. All right, great. And I say, huh, okay, good buddy. I uh, slap him on the back, give him uh, 200 gold, and uh, give him the head nod. Okay, how much gold do you have left? Uh, 1,100. There's no way. We yeah, have because a shit ton of from my, like from my gym, initially I had like 3,000. I bought... Uh, Wait, here, let me describe this a little bit better. You see, I have, like, you have to realize the proportion to my wages to their wages. I almost have 100 gold so that means they are loaded no i know that but i gave him 3000 gold that's what you had in liquid cash and i spent 1000 on the uh and you gave hammer fingers and you gave at least a thousand of it to your brother yeah so then i was down to 1000 gold and then we, and then we just found some in those chests library. okay because I got some from that as well. Okay, so that's up to yes. 1,100. So now you have 900? So that's how math works. Okay. <laughs> I just want to make sure that we're actually keeping track of this, because I actually started going through, like, there's no fucking way they have this much cash on them. And just so I know, just so you know, when I get back, I guarantee Figus has a shit ton for me at the Hammer Fist ready. And all of Figus's wages go to me, so... Maybe some for me, you know. Yeah, and everyone... You haven't, you haven't been working? Why would I pay you for no employment over there? <laughs> Every time you say remove five gold from your inventory, we actually add five gold. <laughs> <laughs> what do we spend money on? Well, Figus is your lawyer, accountant, general, uh, manager, general manager. What else is his job titles? Child. Prostitute. Um, whoa. No, he's prostituting the gym. He's selling it to people. Memberships. Nice save, buddy. <laughs> he's prostituting memberships. He's whoring out memberships. <laughs> 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 Any other ideas of what Fice's job titles will be? <laughs> All right. Uh, now that Tyndall goes his separate way, you can hear off in the distance the faint noise of music. I, I would like to turn around, stalk Tinder, and then spear him again. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. We can get on with the podcast. <laughs> I just wanted the listeners to know that the look that Paul just gave to Ben would literally kill a lesser man. <laughs> Anybody who is not Mr. Blue Devil. 2016. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's funny because they give you a card. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Wait, you really got a card? Yeah, you got a card. It's yeah. a Mr. Blue Devil. The, it. it also got me into all sporting events, but all sporting events were already done for this season, and I tried to go to one of the soccer games. They're like, oh, it doesn't work for playoffs. And I was like, well, shit, I cannot use this on anything but maybe the wrestling season. Is it like a... Heck yeah, man. Like a credit card-sized card that yeah. says, I am Mr. Blue yeah, Devil. Yeah, it literally oh, says, it looks like a school I ID. am Mr. Blue Devil, oh. and there's a little devil head Wait, on does it. does that work forever or just that year? No, just that year. That's because Matt that was Mr. Blue Devil 2015. <laughs> See, you had to win a beauty contest for that. I got it because I was just that smart. No, no, no. I'm pretty sure he won nah, it because he had a male choir. And you never Paul, won. Stop making this about you. <laughs> hey, Paul, you won too? Oh, you want to go there? Let's you go back go to there? Paul didn't win this beauty contest. Okay, so he you guys the head down the street. piano upside down, and you just had a bunch of guys screaming <laughs> random songs. <laughs> That's it. We have to have a new contest where we take all of the previous Mr. Blue Devils and put them through a Mr. Blue Devil. Ooh, like the Hunger Games. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to give them weapons? This really screams I peaked in high school. <laughs> <laughs> you guys head down the street. Uh, you round the corner, and she, just as Carfwad explained, there are... A ton of people out in the street dancing while there are bards playing on the front stoop of a place that has a wooden sign with a man holding a tankard of beer. It's sloshing out of the beer and it says Robert's Hall. Bob's Hall. This is uh, where we should go. Out of character real quick. Ben, does your character know how to read yet? No. Vaguely. Not really. Uh, you know, every time I've ever picked up a document or a book or whatever, I always look at it like I know that I'm reading, but realistically, I do not know shit what's going on. I would think by now, like, there's times, like, I look at a document, and then somebody else looks at the document, and then they say what was on the document, so maybe I'm starting to get, like, bits and pieces, but ultimately, no, I'm still at the reading level of a four-year-old. Yeah. You you did say that you did take some reading lessons. Did I? Yep. Yeah. Or Who at taught you? me the lessons? You said you can read Bodies. about as much that is absolutely necessary for the gym's advertising. Oh, nice. So I know <laughs> the only words I know. Marketing, martial arts, hammer fist, gym, fighting, anything dealing with training. Those demons. are the only words. Yes, and demon stuff. Those are the only words I recognize. Everything else, even like pronouns and little stuff, no fucking clue. <laughs> but big words that anything associated with what I want to know, I know just what it like, means. Just like those old, like... 1998 pop-ups you won marketing advertising martial arts that, yep when i look at a full page those are the only words that i actually can make out everything else no chance so inside the roberts hall you head inside you make your way in between the bodies of tieflings and half elves humans there are even some halflings and gnomes around and uh they're all carousing merrily and the bards are playing a merry tune outside inside the noise is cacophonous but in a good sort of way there are people laughing loudly and drinking heavily there are people singing drunkenly in the corner and there's another bard in the back corner who you actually recognize as the orator from the stage and he is telling a loud and body tale about his travels in the northern reaches near the Prussian Canal system. And you can hear him louder than everybody because he has this marvelous speaking voice. And he says, Yes, and then I told the goblin, Well, sir, if you're going to take my money, you might as well take my shorts. And everybody laughs. Man, it is really carcophonous in here, isn't it? <laughs> carcophonous. That's what I said. Yeah, so no, naturally, though, if he's talking about the present canal system, I would want to be just kind of, like, listening for more information on that because it is in the back burners of my mind to go there after we hit up the capital. All right. Um, do you go to talk to him, or...? I mean, if he's finished talking and these two aren't going to spear him on sight, which is actually surprising... <laughs> <laughs> the tale is finished, and everybody's laughing and kind of wandering away. He tosses back the rest of his drink and stands up from where he was sitting along the wall, heads over to the bar, and a man comes and up to him oh and whispers in his ear, and he nods jovially. What's man doing here? 
Did you say a man. man or man? A you definitely man. said man. No, you, you, said you said man, man. and I thought the same thing. I'm like, no way. Is he in cahoots with him somehow? And you just really threw me they're off. they're gonna die. No, a man. <laughs> uh, a man. Who's a man? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise Praise the Lord. Such a holy place. <laughs> it's raining, man. Hallelujah. <laughs> I saw the sky, <laughs> and it opened up my eyes, I saw the sky. Okay. I'm never going to forget, and I was cutting my grass, and I heard that for the first time. <laughs> I looked up to the sky, and it was actually... It was there? Yeah, Fuck no. Fuck, saw it. <laughs> and and, and uh, yeah, I cut an unstraight line in my grass, so... So, yes, um, the orator, the bard, pats it, the other guy jovially on the back, and... Uh, the man walks away, and the bard walks up to the bar to order another drink. I would like to go to the bar. All right. Um, you walk up to the bar. It's pretty crowded, but you're able to shoulder your way up to the bar. Uh, are you going next to the bard, or are you... I Well, on my way there, is there anybody of relatively the same size as me and my brother? No, you are definitely the tallest Fuck. people in this bar. Definitely back to Gears of War running style. Yeah, so I would... Well, fuck, I can't really do that. So go to the bar. I don't want to go next to the bard. I want to order... What is there? Order a dirty dwarf. Trust me, you'll love it. The big brutish bartender with a unibrow and thick curly hair uh, says... We got whatever you want, I guess. Order a dripping druid. Or a goopy gnome. We serve alcohol. And we serve juice. <laughs> 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 Why? It's to the point here. <laughs> I'll take whatever the most popular shit is here tonight. That would be beer. And he puts a tankard of beer in front of you, just like the beer that you saw on the sign outside. And it's big, frothy, and a golden, pale color. I love golden, frothy right. things. I pay him for it, whatever it is. It's three coppers. Sure. I do that, down that son of a bitch, and then I spear what's his name? The bard? No. No, 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 no. You did point to me. <laughs> what's the guy's name? Uh, he's the orator. That guy. I want to make sure that uh, once I see what he's doing... I would like to send my mage hand with some popcorn up to the stage and sprinkle popcorn above his head. So right before he gets speared by my brother, he looks up at the popcorn falling on him. He's at the bar. He's not at the stage. Fuck, I thought he was still on the stage. No, the stage was back by the church. Well, uh, was he standing on the bar? No, he went back to the bar and then yeah, some but he was giving his, over. He was giving a speech yeah, in Yeah, he bar. was just holding court at a table. Telling stories of his... Check your hearing, Ben. That's what he said. That's what I said. Damn the it. stage. That's what he said. Uh, listen, stage is a relative term. Sitting at a table, this could be a stage for all of us right here at this Dungeons & Dragons table. We are performing, aren't we? we this are. is our stage. All the world's listen, a stage, I said, as Shakespeare out. says. Performing is a very loose term. Ambionitis, you spear the orator oh, slash yeah. the bard. Yep. Roll for hit. Fuck yeah. Hey, he only has 14 total HPs. Wait, he is the bard? Yes. The Ooh. bard and the orator are the same person. Well, fuck. Yeah, Spear. While this is happening, I want to go to, like, the far end of the bar. So I'm away from this. He hits him. Yeah. <laughs> is it over 20? You hit him. Nice. And he drops his beer. It goes sloshing over the guy next to him. He goes to the floor. And everybody around you backs up. And there is a noticeable lull in all conversation. Did you hit him with popcorn? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So it's funny, which means people are going to buy that as a demonstration working. I used Whisper to make sure he heard that, so he knew in-game that that's actually what's going on. Well, I'm assuming I saw the <laughs> popcorn raining down on him. I just wanted to be sure that you actually did it. No, you just had the spear vision. You just tunnel <laughs> visions right to him. <laughs> are you... I want to look at him and go, are you okay? Because I saw the attack of the popcorn going on, and I don't know where it came from. I do not appreciate being tackled twice in one day. Whoa, 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 whoa. And he stands up, yanks his shirt tight, and 
then brushes off the froth from the beer that has been spilled. Does he have a? Does he have any popcorn residing on his shoulders? Can I dust his shoulder off for him? You go to reach to dust off his shoulder, and he smacks your hand away and says, "Don't touch me." I spear him for smacking my brother. <laughs> Listen here, Dick. Brexius, did you actually spear him? No, but I did. Uh, are you? I'm trying to help, and also popcorn falling out of nowhere. I had to make sure that you were okay because you played a big part in my brother's thing today. So you touch me again, I will fuck you up. Back to this. How are you? I would like to come up and just be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Everything's okay. Did you give him the coupon yet? No, you have the coupons. Uh, the guy behind you who got splashed with the beer yanks Ambionitis around and goes, you just spilled beer all over my shirt. Hey, you better stop that. I'm going to walk up, put my hand on his shoulder and do my creepy smile. I'm just going to tell him bad move, guy. You. Can I roll intimidation? Uh, the bartender bangs his fist on the bar and says, Hey, we don't deal with that shit here. Yeah, you better stop Knock that. Knock it off. Or else I'm tell gonna this fucking guy. Or else ah, I'm gonna... no! Hey, you better shut up. Or else I'm going to have to put my beer down. Bingo. My hand's on my sword. Um, the bartender is motioning to two large guys at the other end of the bar. How large? Larger Not than as us? large as you guys. Let's here. go. <laughs> they come over and they and they say, maybe you had a little bit too much to drink, boys. I actually have not drank anything yet. I had one. Think we should step outside. Maybe you need a breath of fresh air. Honestly, I'm pretty sure they all just got it out of them their systems now. They'll be fine the rest of the night. My kid, can I just do a creepy laugh with my hand on my sword and try intimidating them? You sure you want to put your hand on your sword in a crowded bar? Can I do this while I'm doing my creepy laugh and smile at him, like, intimidatingly? Like, I think you should let me go with my role first. <laughs> sure. I well, think I know this guy, and it's not an issue. We were just trying to help him. There's falling popcorn. My brother said it himself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ambionitis and Brixius, Jet and Prothean, you're all there now. What are your passive perceptions? 14. 16. 16. 13. You all notice that while the bouncers were talking to you, the orator has slipped his hand inside the jacket pocket of the guy who the beer got spilled on, and he just lifted the guy's coin purse. Can I shadow step to him? or There are no shadows in the bar. I draw my sword at his throat and tell him Easy. to put it back or you lose your hand. Motherfucker. Whoa, 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 hey, my character's whoa. flaws are I see a criminal. He's good going to lose a hand. I apologize. That actually is my flaw. <laughs> Everybody around you is pushed out of the way and you are tackled by these two big guys. We were stopping they a thief. A natural 19 plus four. I got hit. And you are being grappled. Can I grab Guy's hand, the or, uh, what the hell's his name? Bard. I'm gonna call him Bard, because I don't know the other word. Can I grab his hand? Sure. Do I have to roll for it? Yeah. Since I haven't really been in any of this racket, can I, like, kind of get through that crowd and kind of go after the dude who stole the coin purse? And He's probably... still there. Oh, okay. I was holding my sword to his throat when I got tackled. Oh, I see. You got to him. I'll block the exit. What do I roll? What do I add to that? Uh, it'd be strength. You're trying to grapple him. Oh, fucking eight. Hold on. I have a divine thing. I do have that. <laughs> Twelve. Yeah, that is my, one of my character flaws is I can't stop. I'll, uh, now that a criminal go. Uh, go ahead and give me a contested grapple. So it's a strength roll to see if the sword is wrested away from you. Seventeen. All right. Uh, the sword is wrestled away from you. They rolled a twenty-four. And they now have your sword. They have you grappled and have dragged you up to your feet and are dragging you out the door. They toss you out into the street and they tell you not to come back. Be rich, or Ambionitis. The thief, the bard, the orator, they're all the same person, manages to yank his hand back from you and says, Excuse me, First you tackle me, then you try to grab me. What is wrong with you? Listen, asshole, you pulled it from this guy's check, and I turned to the guy you just stole from and said, Hey, check your pocket. Do you Are you missing something specifically in your jacket pocket? He pats himself down and goes, No, he, he stole from me. No shit. Can I 
try to repin this fucking guy by his neck or by just putting weight on him because I'm assuming he's against the bar. Sure. Turn the bouncers onto him. Just bend him gently over the bar. Yeah, it's just completely <laughs> backwards the way he's not supposed to go. <laughs> and he says, all right, all right, I, I just, yeah, I have it in my hand. It fell out of your jacket and I meant to hand it back to you. And he hands it back. Right. Because Someone point out that I only hunt down criminals. Be no. I'll get to you. <laughs> Is there any type of, like, check he can make to see if everybody believes him or not? Who? The orator, when he said, I tried to give it back to you, can he make a pers like persuasion check? Why would or you want that? Or can the other guy make an inside check to yeah. see if they think he's on the trick? Because otherwise they might just believe it. Uh, the bartender says, that's it. All of you, out. Don't worry. I'll take this one. Fine. Tell your friend he's allowed back tomorrow. But not to pull swords in my establishment again. We deal with this shit like gentlemen. Right. He's a paladin. Kind of a hard ass. Gotcha. So I grab this guy by the neck, and I want to take him out with me. All right. So, Abe, are you also leaving the establishment? <laughs> he can just sit <laughs> Grab in the corner. Beer. <laughs> just sitting at the end of the bar. Like, He's like, wow, that shit was crazy. <laughs> oh. looks, at, looks at the guy next to him. Can you believe these fucking guys? <laughs> uh, out in the street. I guess I'll follow them out, but not like immediately. Okay. So it's not like obvious I'm with them. Well, once you are outside. Uh, does any of them have my sword? We'll get there. Well, I'd still like to do something before I leave. What would you like to do? All right. Before Bring I leave, my sword back. everyone, I have an announcement. God damn. What you just saw happen there was my brother, Ambionitis, provide a demonstration of how to prevent thievery in self-defense classes. <laughs> so, we will be having lessons similar to these and his well-executed plan. Hey, I set out. Thievery, huh? At the Hammer Five. New gym coming to town. See ya. <laughs> Uh, out in the street, Prothean is sitting on the stoop of the building across the street. Oh, any of you guys have my sword? No chance. Where the fuck I grab my great sword off my back. Oh, see, you got a sword. Where the fuck did the sword go? They took it away from me. Yeah, where'd they go? Inside when it threw me out. Yeah, no, here, I grabbed your sword for you. And, uh, I think this guy should tell us some more about that Prussian Canal system that he's been to. Isn't that where we're trying to go after we go to our current destination? Hey, 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 look, I'm not... I am just an orator. I tell stories. I squeeze his neck. And steal. <laughs> that doesn't feel good. Sure it doesn't. I choke slam him. <laughs> you throw him to the ground. Like, yeah, yeah, it does. just choke slam. Um, are you doing this directly in front of the bar, or have you, like, frog marched him away from Correct. the other people? Yes. In the alley. Okay. Uh, he looks visibly dazed. Sure. So I want to put my foot on him and look at Jet like the aircraft. Continue with your line of questioning. So as you can see, we don't need any... We don't have time for some bullshit here. Uh, just tell us what you know about the Prussian Canal system. And you'll live. And we'll be along just fine. Give me an intimidation check with advantage. Which one of us? Uh... Ambionitis. The guy with the foot on him. Uh, Jet, you can roll persuasion if you would like. But I think the intimidation will probably work. I'll let yeah. It work. Uh, 21. Look, look. I. Uh, look. <laughs> I travel all over the place, all right? I've, I've traveled to many different places. Smack it's like, him what, again. <laughs> what? No, 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 no. What do you want to know? We're looking for a man named Riley Bevden. I, I don't know anybody by that name. Are you sure? I'm positive. I don't know anybody by that name. My name is uh, Beck Northwood. If you, My you name know. is Biley Revden. <laughs> Good to meet you, Biley Revden. But you no, know, my name is Beck Northwood. I am a world-renowned, well, kingdom-renowned bard. And uh, please, please don't hurt my neck again. Uh, I will tell you whatever you want to know. Like, I, I know that... Uh, I, I, I can get you your adventurers, right? Your adventurers. What gave it away? 
Oh, you're you're all so so beefy. Entrepreneur. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, then I'm I'm sure that you're always looking for a good deal. I can get you a good deal on adventuring gear over at Kamara's shop. Do they have any plus three warhammers? <laughs> I don't believe so. Then I don't need you. I, no, 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 I I have <laughs> I I have other things. I I know other things. Yeah. 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 What, no. what else? What else? Tell me. Tell me some of the things you know, because it seems like you know a lot. So tell me. Tell me about some of these things. You're not going to hurt me anymore, right? Depends. Tell me. I'm not over yet. Prothean's picking his teeth with a knife. Well, I, I, your adventures. I know somebody that could hire you for a lot of money. Is his name Riley Bevan? No, it, it's um, it, it's um, Biley Revden. Ho- hold on, I, I have it. I know it. It's uh, I, I know he, he hires people. He lives out in the Barrier Ridge Mountain Pass. He hires adventurers to uh. <laughs> To go deal with, he's about to say Sir Whitehurst, isn't he? Oh, yes, that's his name. Oh, Brody is dying of laughter. That's unfortunate. <laughs> Somebody should smack him real quick. What do you know about this no, guy? No, hey, why, why are you gonna smack me? Yeah, don't smack him. He's already, smack him. He's already fucking planted. <laughs> smack, smack. Uh, you know this guy? He hires for demon work. What do you know about the demons? I know that, well, they're not good. It's Trugala. Helleros is our one true god, and he doesn't. we don't deal with demons anymore. Yeah, you do. Prothean looks pissed. Easy. Easy, buddy. It's all right. Take about 10% off there, guy. Look, I, I just, like, it's, it's money, right? Who doesn't like money? Yeah, I Money guess. is optional. Not going to have a lot of that anytime soon. Do you know about any of the people that he's worked with? A.K.A. Riley Bevden. Um, no, I don't know anybody that he worked with. I believe him. No, I, I believe about who he's talking about and everything like that, and that the guy does have jobs for demons and everything. Is he a pretty, pretty stand-up guy, you'd say? Have you ever met him? Or you just know of him? I know of him. Hmm. Me too. Nice guy. So how do you know what he does, then? Who told you about him? Like I said, I've been all over. Oh, right, right. He said that. My bad. I, I know people. Have you ever heard the words diadem exorius? No, no, can't say that I have. I feel like we were questioning the wrong fucking guy for some shit like that. He's heard all kinds of stories, you never know. Right, um, we're supposed to go to the capital tomorrow, right? Yeah. You're going to the capital? We're going to talk to Zawatsky. I, I don't know that name, um, but you, you realize it's not like a one-day journey. The capital is like two weeks away. Hmm. Huh. We didn't know that. Do you know any shortcuts? Being ways to like fast travel there. You can just ride there. I got my bear. You ride a bear? I snap my finger and a bear comes running. That's a terrible idea. This right is a, a fucking city. city. Right through a city. With a bar and busy people. You've never seen a bear in the middle of town? There are performance bears. He can maybe get away with it. Right. Just like we just got out of spearing this guy in the middle of a bar. Can I oh, we did. fake fight your bear for a demonstration? No. Yes. Well, Fuck real fight it. the bear. <laughs> Back to this guy. How would you go about getting to the capital? Head straight east. Great. You say you've been all over, right? Yes. Well, you're about to be all over this alleyway. A <laughs> little bit over there. A little bit over there. A little bit over there. Why? 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 I'm just fucking with you. Uh, but... Wait, or am I? Isn't... Give me an... I'm inti- a blank stare. Give me an intimidation check. Does he have advantage because I'm standing on him? And that he was already intimidated? 26. Doesn't need it. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, wait, uh, I... I mean, I know, might I, just, I rolled a natural 19. Maybe I could go for a natural 20. <laughs> I just remembered, uh, Siren. He, he, he works... The, he works for a guy who's a highly placed priest in Principium. That's 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 right. So if you're headed there, you you might be able to talk to Sirens. You might be able to get a better job. You won't have to go through a middleman. See, see, What's I, his I'm name? looking out for you guys. This is definitely the wrong person that we could be questioning. This guy doesn't know shit. I I. I Okay. I told you well, all, I'm all over I it then, you guys, whatever you want to do. You guys done interrogating him? I mean, if you want to know about no. the Prussian Canal system, I... I promise I will not kill him, No. Please don't kill me. I, the Prussian Canal system, it's its all swampland now. Like, there's lots of goblins. It, it's... That's all I know. I don't want to go in there. There, You could get malaria. Who is the guy that Siren works for in Principium? I, I don't know. 
I just know that he's a highly pra- placed priest. Thief. Left or right? Left or right what? Left or right. I, I don't... I said left or right. Left? All right. Oh. <laughs> Thieves lose hands. No. No, 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 no. I, I didn't thieve anything. I just found it on the ground. Does he still have All the right. coin I gave purse? It back. Since he didn't go through it, I'm not going to cut his hand off. That's a flex attendant. Did you actually see him do it? Did he yes, see him do we it? we all saw him do it. Ah, damn. Okay. I walk over, pick up his left hand, and cut the flex attendant in his wrist. I... Uh, Surgically, so he's not bleeding out. I would prevent you from doing that. I mean, I'd probably let it happen and then try to tell the guy if he comes to my gym, I'd teach him how to avoid that happening again. <laughs> you guys know I do this to criminals. That and call the thief into forehead. I say we all go take a walk and leave Protean here with this guy for a little bit. Wait, I think uh, I think that bar down the street had a pretty good deal going on. You guys want to go out for some uh, drinks? I picked this guy up <laughs> before guy can mutilate him and say, we will be around in town. Don't do dumb shit. And I... But my flex are tendon. Can I grab his... Can I, like, cure wounds on him? Can I grab his wrist without him, like, really seeing it? Uh, give me a sleight of hand. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> a four? Yeah. Uh, there is a discernible glow in the dark alley. Oh, he's getting thief covered in his forehead now. Yeah. Uh, the... Bard runs. Back yeah. Northwood runs. Like behind me. What's his psalm speed? Uh, we're just gonna. Man, it's alright. It's alright. He learned his lesson. I have a gambling problem. I'm sorry. Protein, protein. Why don't we, uh, why don't we let this one go, big guy? I, you made your point. I think you scared him out of thieving. I think we'll be alright. I mean, you're coming back to Crusade this place anyway, so Fair you'll enough. get him then. You remember him. Make sure he's yeah. the first one to go. Right, and then we just enjoyed the rest of our night, and we're going to fast travel to uh, Princium, the capital. Principium? Yep, Principium. Principality. Sorry it doesn't work like that. Sure it does. Yeah, we can't fast travel because we haven't been there yet. Once we go there at least once, then we can, we can oh, teleport there. Oh, I see, there. I see, I see. We just... Uh, Where's Figus with the horses? Running the hammer fist. Whistle really, really loud for Figus. So, now that he's gone... My character whistles really loudly. Can you around. project your magical animal, spirit animal, to, like, look like a Figus? No. So, he said that Siren works for a guy in Principium who is a high-up priest. A.K.A. we know a guy who's a high-up priest in Principium who deals with demons, Zawatsky. Man, put and that together all yourself, did you? Siren <laughs> is working for him, Zawatsky might be summoning the demons, and then Siren's making out for money by killing the demons? I don't get it. Did you say you don't get it? It's a you pretty explained black it and white plot. Yeah, but who's paying Siren then? Zawatsky? He's getting a promotion from the church for hunting down demons. Oh, it's the church paying him? Probably. It's normally, it's normally the richest people in the town countries. What if they're just summoning the demons and then having the townspeople pay them to go kill the demons? And then that's how it's working. All right, so that, that makes sense then. Just like that. They're stealing from the people. Real Robin Hood type shit. They're the real thieves. Okay, I just want to make sure on the right, road there... We're They're summoning the demons so that the demons can attack City. the South Salt Ians. And then and they then get the, paid. And then they're coming in and killing the demons so it looks like the true golems are helping. And they're not behind it. Good. I just After want, they've already killed a ton of people. Right. I just want to make sure we were all on the same page on the road there. So we're going to kill Zawatsky. Wait, what you just said. We're going to go question him. Killing South Salt people. Or not, not South Salt, but like the free... Ralvarians. Ralvarians. The free cities. The free cities. So like free cities. South Salt, Forskinium, Coruscinium. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Those are the only Chorus, two cities he knows. Ryford. That's what we said. Forskinium. Forskinium. <laughs> That's what we said. So they're killing a lot of people there. You think they could be weakening up to take over? I mean, probably. They they've been at war for however the fuck long. The paladins are torn, and the army will stop them. Yeah, they'd either be taking, like, weakening them up with the demons and everything like that, or trying to show that they're helping so everybody just kind of merges into one kingdom to follow them because of the help that they've given them. That's what I'm saying. It's kind of like some Roman Empire type shit. Yeah, right. But that's metagaming, so I wouldn't know about that. Holy shit, this is actually a genius plan I mean, on their part. We know about the Trojans. We do know about the Trojans. Uh, and their protection. <laughs> what is Robert going to do about this? And the Spartans. <laughs> you know the Spartans? Yeah, I like the Spartans. 
good guys. All 300 So of them. where are you all going to stay this evening? I don't think you could go back to Robert's Hall at this point. What is the next best place? That one. You could ask somebody in the crowd. Yes. Let's go to that cheap place that uh, Lord Farquaad mentioned and then wait for the owner to get back from her night of partying and ask if we could stay. Honestly, if we have five really big guys standing outside our house, I don't think he's going to be coming home. Yeah, or check this out. Since they don't know that you're with us, you can go ask where there would be like another party area at with rooms. Bingo. I can do that. I can always just try going back in and talking my way in. Terrible idea. Horrible idea. I'll go back in and ask about a room. Uh, the unibrowed bartender goes, well, if you're looking for a place, we're kind of booked up here, but uh, there's another place around the corner, uh, next street over, called Oats Hall. <laughs> and uh, I contributed. Fuck all of you. <laughs> <laughs> And they'll probably have some rooms, too. Will there be some private eyes watching me? What kind of music they play there? <laughs> You're a rich girl. Because you've gone too far, and you know it don't matter anyway. Well, you certainly don't have to be a rich girl to enjoy your time there. You can save money, but it won't get you too far. Get you too far. Save money here, because it's a cheap, cheap place. Well, I guess I go to uh, All Notes, and... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, as you are walking that way and you let your group know and you guys head over to the next street, uh, you're passing by an alley and I need you all to make perception checks. I shoot an arrow into the alley. <laughs> <laughs> Fireball. Fuck. 15. Natural 20. Oh, son of a bitch. 18. 8. Jet and Brixius, you notice a familiar figure in the alleyway, looking very furtive and speaking with someone. There's a fucking tailor. Guys, there's a furtive, familiar <laughs> figure in the alleyway. Pay attention. Talking to someone. What does that mean? As We're you're about to hear. As you discuss this, the other figure walks away, and the familiar figure turns, and you see in the light that it is Harry. Jet, shadow step in front Guys, of the other guy. It's Harry. Can I whoosh in front of the guy who's uh, escaping? No, he's at. he went out the far end of the alley, which is farther than 60 feet, but you can reach Harry in 60 feet. Go behind him and run after the other guy. Yeah, I will pus- pursue guy number two the best I can. Be beyond Harry. So full dash and then bonus action of a shadow step. Okay. You turn the corner at the far end of the alley, and he has disappeared in the crowd of people in the street. You didn't see his face. We saw Harry hand something to somebody? Or somebody speaking hand with something some, to Speaking Harry. with him. Well, I guess now I have the exit blocked off so that everyone else can take him. Time so. for intimidation checks. Hold on, hold on, everyone. What if he was just like trying to get jiggy with a girl that he found in the crowd and they went to the alleyway? That didn't look like a girl on though. Nope. <laughs> You're the one who saw it the best besides me, bud. We just saw him talking to someone. Is Harry not allowed in public these days? No. Jet, you suddenly feel a presence behind you, and you hear a voice say, Jet, what are you doing here? Is, is there somebody behind me? That's Harry's voice. <laughs> and that's where we're going to end our episode. Fuck you. <laughs> now. Just be like, oh, I was just trying to meet my Tinder date here. You were trying to go on we're a date on with Tinder? Hinge now. <laughs> it's a grinder date. Grinder. <laughs> Tinder was at the... Ye old grinder. So, yeah, I guess we're going to end on a cliffhanger and... Uh, Find out what happens next time on the Death Saving Bros podcast. Well, step one, Harry's getting murdered. <laughs> Most likely. I'm be- I can get behind that. Tinder sort of got his like, at least hand cut off, but no. Fuck you guys. Why would you cut Tinder's hand off? He was doing fine. There was a brief second I thought you were going to say, and then all of a sudden you feel behind you, and you got to make your constitution saving throw so you don't go super demon. I was like, you oh, feel Jesus. something <laughs> slipping up into your cheeks. It's Beck that you were going to cut his hand off. We've been over this. Eye for an eye. Gives a loser hand. Makes the whole world blind. If you enjoyed this episode of the Death Saving Bros podcast, leave us a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts or Stitcher. And if you didn't enjoy this episode, lie and leave us a five-star review. It makes us feel good. If you guys didn't like this episode, come find me. I'll fight you guys (laughs) at the park after school.
In his Harry Potter pajama pants. Fuck yes. Is that what those are? Yes, they are. Ten points to Gryffindor. I'm actually a Hufflepuff. So you're Huffle, a traitor what? is what you're saying. If you want to keep in touch with us in between episodes, you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Death Saving Bros. You can also follow us at Life Saving Bros on Instagram for tips, tricks, and other gaming materials to bring your own D&D campaign to life. You can follow me personally at HP Camper. You can follow me at Benfro15. I am found at Ima underscore B underscore Rad. Use the fucking main page, bitches. Find me on Old School RuneScape as Fat, F A T T, Space, Smith. You can catch me outside. How about that? And you don't even play Old School RuneScape, you lying sack of shit. I will one of these days. Did you like stop tweeting? I promise. Hmm? Did you like stop tweeting? I have not used that in a while. Pretty sure I tweeted at you the other day. I'm sure you did. I don't get notifications with that. The only time I get notifications is if I'm literally tagged in something and if I just so happen to gander at my phone. If you do want to follow him for no good reason, it's B underscore R-I-C-H-A 918. Thank you. And those of you listening in your homes, in your cars, or wherever you may be, Keep saving those death rows, and we'll see you on the next one. And look out for that pole. Pole campers. We are live on the air. We are on air. I thought we were on ground. On acid. Mm. I am. Damn it! Sorry. I'm guessing Mexico scored. No, that means that there was a really close chance and we did not score. Fucking U.S. men's team. Paul's family gets excited when we don't score in soccer. Fucking (laughs) Nashboro. They (laughs) suck up there. Oh, because Mexico's up one nothing. So we had a chance to tie it. All right, so flamethrower, if I give you... Some of the sounds and background music in this production are copyright material. The songs Dark Times, Hyper Fun, Moonlight Hall, On the Ground, Past the Edge, Rights, and Sovereign Quarter are by Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com, licensed under Creative Commons Attribution License 4.0, and sourced from filmmusic.io. The tracks Dreams of War and Morning Flags are music by Orchestralis. The Death Saving Bros theme song is an abridged version of the song Run by Kai Angle and sourced from the Free Music Archive. This track is used with permission under Creative Commons Attribution License 4.0. You can read the full license at creativecommons.org slash licenses slash buy slash 4.0 slash legal code.